Using this 5 volt and 3 amps power supply, you can power up all your controller boards like Arduino, ESP8266, ESP32, Raspberry Pi Pico, ESP32 camera module, STM32 and so on. Besides this, you can also use this 5 volt power supply for charging your cell phones. You can power up your portable displays, you can power up your robots, servo motors, LED strips and so many other input and output modules. In this video, I'm going to share with you every bit of information like for example, in which software I designed this PCB, how I generated the Gerber files, how I placed online order on JLC PCB official website, from where I purchased all these tiny SMD components, how I did the soldering and in the end I will practically test it with different loads. Let me tell you in detail why I needed to make this 5 volt 3 amps power supply module. Right from the beginning I have been using 7805 for voltage regulator for powering up my development boards. This is the Arduino Nano development board which I use for testing my Arduino based projects and you can see it has this 7805 voltage regulator. The same exact 5 volt power supply you will also find in my ESP32 Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth module development board. I also used it with Node MCU ESP8266 and the same exact voltage regulator I also used in my ESP32 camera development board. It's not like that 7805 voltage regulator is the best or it has outstanding performance. I used it only because of its cheap price and its easy availability. You can get it from any local electronics shop and more, it's easy to use. So it's good for testing prototype models but in the long run it's really a bad idea to use 7805 voltage regulator because after only 5 to 6 minutes of use it really gets hot and this is because of its low output current. And sometimes even during performing the test the controller boards are freezed. I'm sure you might have faced this weird situation when the Arduino or ESP32 or ESP8266 or any other controller board suddenly stops working and then you would go and manually reset the controller board or you would disconnect the supply and connect it again. So that's why in battery power devices and in high end user products you won't see 7805 voltage regulator. Anyway, since I'm starting a new series on products designing, so it's time to say bye bye to 7805 voltage regulator. And I'm going to start with MP1584 3Ms 1.5 MHz 28 volt step down converter. Just look at the size difference using MP1584, we can tremendously reduce the PCB size. Anyway, it accepts a wide range of input voltages from 4.5 volts to 28 volts. Its output is completely adjustable only by changing one resistor. You can get 1.8 volts, 3.3 volts, 5 volts, 9 volts, 12 volts, and so on. In the MP1584 datasheet, output typical application circuit diagrams are given. So, first I decided to start with this 5 volt output typical application schematic. Using the same exact components, I designed this PCB in Ultium Designer. Anyway, when I checked the output voltage, it was greater than 6 volts. You know, in this circuit diagram, the resistors R1 and R2 sets the output voltage. If we divide R1 by R2, we get 5.2 volts. But on my circuit, I got the wrong voltage. So what I did, I checked the actual MP1584 module and what I found was they were using R2 equals to 8.2 kilo ohms. So using this formula V is equal to R1 divided by R2, I calculated the value of R1 while keeping R2 is equal to 8.2 kilo ohms. And as I'm doing this calculation for 5 volts output, so I selected 5. So you can see R1 is equal to 41 kilo ohm. Now, if you divide 41k by 8.2k, you will get exactly 5 volts. But to compensate for any losses, I selected 43 kilo ohm resistor. This way, I expect to get 5.2 volts. Now, using the same exact method, you can do it for any voltage. But remember to keep R2 equals to 8.2 kilo ohms. Otherwise, you may end up getting a wrong voltage at the output. Next, I switched over to Ultium Designer for creating the schematic and designing the PCB. Before creating the schematic and PCB design, first I started off by searching the components on the world's fastest component search engine Octopod. I selected the desired components with footprint models and used them for creating the schematic as per the recommended circuit diagram. 
I made only two changes. I changed R1 to 43 kilo ohm and R2 to 8.2 kilo ohms. I already have a very detailed video on how to make a schematic and PCB using Ultium Designer. I will add a link in the description. Anyway, then I switched over to the PCB designing document. I defined the PCB board size and rearranged all the components using Ultium Designer. You can automatically route all the wires, but I did it manually. Finally, before generating the Gerber files, I activated the 3D layout mode by clicking number 3 on the keyboard. I double checked all the connections and once satisfied, I again activated the 2D layout mode by clicking number 2 on the keyboard. Finally, I was ready to generate the Gerber files. I have already explained this in my previous video on eBank Petri control circuit designing. You should definitely watch this video if you want to learn how to charge 36 volt, 48 volt, or 72 volt eBank batteries using 12 volts. Anyway, after generating the Gerber files, finally I was ready to place an online order on the GLC PCB official website. For the online order placement, I am going to open the GLC PCB official website. They offer extremely cheap prices. You only need to pay $2 for one and two layers PCBs of 100 by 100 mm size. For the same price, you can also order four and six layers PCBs of 50 by 50 mm size. Five PCBs for only $2, it's quite affordable. Besides this, GLC PCB also offers PCB assembly and 3D printing services. Anyway, drag and drop the output folder. It automatically detects the number of layers and the board dimensions. Select the number of PCBs you want to order. You can change other details as per your requirement. In my case, I'm going to change the PCB color and everything else I will leave to their default values. Now I'm going to click on Save to Cart button. These are the PCBs I received from JLC PCB. As you can see, the quality is really great. The silk screen is quite clear and the solder mask looks amazing. Along with the PCBs, I also ordered SMT stencil. I'm really thankful to Sun Founder for sponsoring all these tiny SMD and through hole components. I've been using their products and I'm pretty satisfied. If you're looking for high quality and low cost Raspberry Pi and Arduino boards, starter kits, portable monitors, robots, sensor modules and other tools, then you should definitely visit sunfounder.com. I will provide a link in the description. Now that I have all the required components and tools, so let's go ahead and apply solder paste on this PCB. Since I am doing it for the first time, so I need to be very careful. Rather than using electrical tape for securing the PCBs, I am using screws to tightly hold these PCBs in place. You can see my setup is completed and these PCBs are not going anywhere. As I said earlier, you can also use some kind of electrical tape to secure the PCBs in place. But as in my case, I'm absolutely new to this SMD thing. So I don't want to make any mistake. As you can see, everything looks perfect. Next, align your SMD stencil with the PCB and secure it with tape so that it doesn't move when you apply the soldering paste. I'm going to use the mechanic solder paste as most of the professionals recommended this. Personally, I have no idea if this is the best one. This is pretty awesome. I can't believe I did it so perfectly. Next I'm going to place these SMD components on the PCB using these non-magnetic ESD tweezers. I got this kit from Sun Founder. 
and it's also available on Amazon. I'm going to use my and install digital microscope this way I can face the tiny SMD components without putting in a lot of effort. A digital microscope like the end and star is one of the must have tools. Without a microscope, putting these tiny SMT components on the PCB would have been so difficult. You can see all the SMD components have been placed and now we'll start the soldering. Especially for this video, I purchased this Kara 850 SMD rework station from a local electronics shop and I don't know how well it's going to perform. I've never used any type of SMD rework station, so at this time I can't share with you my personal experience. Anyway, I set the airflow at around 2 because I don't want my SMD components to fly away and I set the temperature between 300 and 350 degrees Celsius. Prior to the actual soldering, I started with an old circuit board to practice for a while, but it didn't help me. In the start, I had no idea if I was doing it in the wrong way or if there was something wrong with the heat gun. Anyway, I continued with what I was doing and then I realized actually there was something wrong with the SMD rework station, it was quite unpredictable. Sometimes the temperature would increase and the other moment more air would come out of the heat gun nozzle. There is no display and I have no idea about the temperature and air. Anyway, I decided to start the soldering. You can see the components are bouncing and I don't see any nice solder joints. I tried multiple times. I increased and decreased the airflow and temperature but it didn't make any difference. And then finally the heat gun melted. So it was definitely the SMD rework station fault. Today I'm going to order a good SMD rework station but for now I'm going to use my ADE tool soldering station to complete the soldering. Soldering these SMD components with a soldering iron is the hardest job. Anyway, somehow I completed the soldering and you can see everything looks messy because of the soldering paste. So I'm going to clean this circuit and then I'll be back. Well, it really doesn't look that bad. Anyway, I used my digital multimeter to check for any short circuits and I also checked the continuity. My DC 543 amps power supply is ready and you can see I have also soldered the USB A90 degree dual layer and the DC female power jack. Now let's go ahead and check the output voltage. Four point eight volts. This is amazing. It's pretty close to five volts. Now let's go ahead and test it with different loads.
This is simply amazing. If it can power up the Raspberry Pi, then it means it can power up all the other controller boards like Arduino, USB A266, STM32, Raspberry Pi Pico and so on. Using this 5 volt 3 amps power supply, you can charge cell phones, you can power up different types of controllers, sensors and DC motors etc. In my upcoming videos, I will also test this 5 volt 3 amps power supply with some other loads. So that's all for now. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you like today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode and thanks for watching.